to do about the price increases. I'm sure you've noticed prices are increasing everywhere, aren't they? Timber, steel, copper, gyprock, the price of all the materials seems to be increasing at the moment. And with them, the prices of many subcontractors as well. And I'm not going to rant about whose fault it is or the profiteering that's perhaps going on. Right? It's happening. It's because of the global situation. It seems to be happening everywhere. How should you, as a trades business owner, handle the fact that your costs are going up? If you're a trades business, your materials will be increasing in cost. If you're a builder, you'll be paying more for materials and for your subcontractors, won't you? And if you're in WA, you'd be paying a lot more for everybody by the sounds of things, because it seems to be uh, mental over there. And there are three things I want you to consider, okay? Future quotes, the ones you haven't done yet, your current open quotes, and the jobs you've already won and signed, okay? Let's talk quick future quotes first, because it's the simplest. Right, your prices need to go up, don't they? Right, it's obvious, this one. Make sure the quotes that you do in the future are based on your new costs. If you're doing it the way I'd prefer you to do it, if you're doing it properly, then go ahead and go and update your price book. I know it's not really a book. Right, and if you do it more manually, then update whatever system you use. But start doing your prices differently. Input the additional costs, the new costs, right? Let's think for a minute, though, before we move on about quote validity. Right now, prices are quite volatile. They're probably going to continue going up. They might go back down. You might want to limit how long you make your quotes valid for. I know this is tricky for builders because your customers might take a long time to decide, but I think it's necessary to limit your exposure. So you make your quotes valid for 30 days or 90 days. Right? Keep validity periods short and explain to your customers what you're doing and discuss what happens if your costs increase. Tell them right, that the costs might go up. If the costs go up between now and when you, they sign a contract, your quote will change. Okay, And if they want a firm quote because they're applying for finance, perhaps, then consider loading up the quote to accommodate that risk and tell the customer that you're doing that. Right? You can go either way. It's not on you to bear the risk of prices going up because you don't have an agreement, you don't have any commitment, and I'm going to tell you in a minute until you've signed a contract. So have that conversation early, right? Either load the quote up and carry the risk yourself or tell them the quote might change, okay? What about for quotes then that are already out there, quotes you've done in the past? You may or may not have a validity period on your quotes. If you don't, that's one thing. If you do and you have quotes out there that are still valid, I don't think you need to stress too much, okay? And this is especially true, like I've said, for builders and for construction subcontractors, isn't it? For maintenance trades, quotes are turned into jobs reasonably quickly and they should be valid for a short time, like seven to 10 days or something, right? And if somebody comes back to you with an old quote, you're quite within your rights to say, it's not valid anymore, things have changed. But if you're a builder or if you subcontract to a builder, right, residential or otherwise, you could have a long sales cycle. You could have done a quote some time ago and you could have it called in now. And particularly as a subby, you know, if you go to your builder and say, so, oh, I need to increase my prices, and he's already locked in, or they're already locked into a contract, you're going to cause waves, so you do need to be a bit careful, right? What should you do? Well, first things first, this is important, right? A quote is not a contract, it's not a binding document, it's an offer only to do the work for a, a price. And you shouldn't feel bad, right? You can withdraw, sorry, I missed the line. You can withdraw your quote at any time, okay? And you shouldn't feel bad about doing this, right? Until your customer has committed to you, by signing a binding contract or accepting your quote in writing, then there's no agreement. You can just walk away just like they can, okay? So all your open quotes, you can revisit and you can tell the client, I'm sorry, prices are increasing. I'm going to have to withdraw that quote and issue you a new one. They might object, right? Residential customers and builders alike might object, but you're not in a binding agreement unless you've signed a contract, okay? They might threaten to go elsewhere. Everyone else will be charging extra, won't they, these days, right? You can decide whether to cave in or not. You can decide whether to make allowances for the sake of that relationship, perhaps, particularly if you're in a relationship with a builder, for example, where you get repeat work. I, I would resist caving in and wearing the additional costs quite hard if I were you, okay? Remember, margins are important. Everyone else's costs are going up too, and all the good trades are busy just like you. So people have not as many options as you might think, okay? 
And here's the last one. What about jobs you've already won? If you've got some cash lying around, because that would be lovely, wouldn't it? You can buy the materials for a job ahead of time, can't you? And protect yourself from the coming price increases. Okay, assuming you've got somewhere to store the materials. And I've got clients doing that, right? Buying materials for jobs they've got to do in the next few months and stashing them so they don't have to pay additional costs later. If you don't have that luxury, you've got a couple of options. Suck it up and wear the extra cost and the impact they're going to have on your margins, right? That's a possibility. It's not a very appealing one, is it, right? doesn't seem fair that you should be stuck in the middle getting your margins squeezed and everyone else gets to be fine. That doesn't seem fair, but you can do that. You can, of course, confront the issue and go and talk to your customer. The HIA, the um, HIA, I can't remember what it stands for. The HIA, the Housing Institute of Australia, recently told a builder client of mine that he could add 5% onto his contracts, their HIA templates, I think, as long as he kept it at 5%. So check your contracts. Check your T's and C's, your terms and conditions of your quotes. Talk to your professional organisation about the contract you're using that you've signed. And talk to a lawyer, if you can't talk to them, about the contract you've got or the T's and C's you've got. And remember this, right? Any contract can be amended if both parties agree. That's important, right? You're not completely obliged just to suck it up. Your first option is to take an honest assessment of the impact to your customer and ask them to share the pain, perhaps. Most people are decent, right? Then we'll come to the party. Unless they're in a bind, they're going to resist harder. But most people are decent, we'll come to the party and try and help, right? If you can insist on a 5% increase, consider doing that. So talk to your lawyers or your professional organisation, get some legal opinion on the quote. Don't take it on me. Your first option is to talk to your customer, see if they'll help. Your second option is to go legal, right? Your option of last resort, if a compromise can't be reached, and the costs eat all your margins, is to examine your contract termination clause, isn't it? All contracts have one, you should have one anyway. You don't need to lose money on a job, right? It might be cheaper to walk away. And one final thing, if your agreement or your terms and conditions don't currently have a clause that states that prices may increase if the price of raw materials increases, or something like that, right? I'm not a lawyer, get it done properly, right? If they don't have one of those, Get one put in, amend your terms and conditions in your contract. One of my builder clients and I were talking about the, the four jobs he was working on right now that he was expecting the costs to go up on and buy, buy a lot, right? He's in WA, buy a lot, right? It was going to ruin all the fun. It was going to take a lot of the margin out of his jobs. I pushed him. He spoke to all four clients. Two immediately accepted a 5% increase. One accepted 2% said they'd meet halfway. One accepted the need, but he's saying he can't afford to pay any more and he's playing a bit of hardball, right? But two said, sure, we understand. Straight away. Remember that, right? You don't necessarily need to suck it up. Now call me. I'll help you get brave. That's my job. If you want to talk about coaching and ask me to help you get brave in a longer sense, book a 10-minute chat to talk about the business coaching, put yourself in a workshop or watch the webinar called Control Your Numbers and learn about numbers and margins and how to manage them better. See you later.